This week, we're going to discuss the emergence of the Hasidic movement and its interpretation of Kabbalah, which arises in the beginning of the 18th century, but really takes hold in the 19th century, by which time the majority of Jews in Eastern Europe will in some way identify with the Hasidic world. But the context goes back much earlier than this, with the fall of the movements around Lurianic Kabbalah, Shabbatite Svi, the false messiah that we heard about just recently. So after that happens, towards the end of the 17th century, we see that the rabbis really stamp down on the study of Kabbalah and it becomes associated with things that are dangerous, things that are bad. In that context, we see a rather austere Judaism emerge. And it was then that a guy arrives on the scene who is called Yisrael ben Eliezer, but who becomes far better known as the Baal Shem Tov, the master of the good name. The problem with telling you anything about his life is that it's all hagiography. We have no sources directly from him or even from his contemporaries, just stories that were collected later on, particularly by somebody who became one of his successors, a guy called the Mugid of Meserich, known as Dov Bear, and his students. So everything that we know about the Baal Shem Tov is really based on legend, so it's very hard to historiize it. But what we do know is that the movement emerges as a reaction against the very austere, legal, halachic approach of Judaism in the beginning of the 18th century. And we also know there are reactions against political leadership, against corruption. And we also know that the 19th century especially sees massive demographic growth within a Russian and Ukrainian Jewry. So in that context, the, the atmosphere was ripe for new ideas and for new theories to emerge. Equally important is the fact that there were parallel revivalist Christian movements happening. So that's what's going on around them. So what is it really that the Baal Shem Tov said and his followers developed? Well, the core idea was that rather than redemption, being a national collective movement, as came out of the false messianic world around uh, Shabbatite Svi, instead of that, redemption is personalized, it's individualized. And you, the individual Jew, are able to achieve redemption for yourself. And the way that one does that is not through an obsession with the detail of halakha, but rather through joy, through simcha, through, through happiness, and through deep spiritual engagement. It's a Judaism of the heart, as opposed to a Judaism of the head. I don't want to give the impression that the movement was anti-halachic. It wasn't. Had it been anti-halachic, I think it would have broken away from Judaism. But it did place much more emphasis on joy and on finding God and a path to God, rather than on the a halachic yeshiva world that was uh, more prominent until that time. And in fact, you, the way that we know how deeply rooted the Hasidic movement became was that it was the opponents of the Hasidic movement who become known exactly as that word, as the opponents, the misnagdim. So if you like, the original or the normative Judaism at the time became known as the opponents of the Hasidic mov movement. And you may sometimes hear that the Misnagdim are sometimes called Litvaks, Lithuanians, which was an area where the Hasidic movement took root far less than other parts of um, Eastern Europe. The one Hasid Hasidic group that does emerge in the uh, Lithuania area is Lubavitch, which we know about as Chabad. So there are several key terms around the Hasidic movement that one needs to become familiar with. Um, we often talk about the idea of religious pantheism, the idea of the omnipresence of God, because this was key to the Hasidic movements. God wasn't an abstract concept up in the heavens, unreachable. God was everything. God was everywhere. But one of the stories that they told, that the Dovver told about uh, the Baal Shem Tov, or excuse me, one of his students told about him, was that he went to visit Dovber in order to see him tying his shoelaces. 
So it wasn't about how much Gemara he, he knew, or how many mitzvot he preserved, rather just the act of being with Dovber and seeing him tie shoelaces, that brought this uh, chassid to God. And the idea of this connection between human beings and God was absolutely a key to the whole movement. One of the terms that they used for that was dveikus, dveikut, cleaving from the Hebrew word debek, meaning glue. And this idea that the goal of Judaism was that one should strive to cleave to God, to come as close to God as possible. The idea is you can get close to God and God can get close to you. And the way that one did this, or two ways of this, firstly, one would talk about the negation of the existence. In Hebrew, bitul hayesh. The idea that the, the world around us was not important. And one did everyone, everything that one could to suppress both the world around you and also negative parts of your own energy. And in doing so, by suppressing that negation, you would have managed to achieve a spiritual high. And one of the key ways one would do that was through connection with a Rebbe or a Tzaddik, depending on which time and which group different words were used. But then the late generations of the Hasidic movements in the 19th century developed into these different courts named after places in Eastern Europe, like Bells or Satmar or Gur. Each of these had a Rebbe. And through your relationship with that Tzaddik or with that Rebbe, by getting close to them, you, the individual Jew, would achieve a spiritual high. And the idea was the more and more people that achieve this spiritual high through the Rebbe, through the Tzaddik, through joy, through Simcha, and through this devout, devout devotion to God, then a great deal of personal redemption would take place, which would ultimately lead to uh, national redemption, to the Messiah. But the Messiah was not perceived in these national terms that we knew about before in the Lurianic era, era. Rather, it was by individual, poor, simple Jews all managing to give meaning to their lives via their tzaddik, via their rebbe, and by trying to cleave to God through simcha, through joy, and through prayer. So that's a very short introduction to what we mean by the Hasidic movement. Thank you.